short in particular? Yes. Did you go to parties there as a freshman? No. The next year as a sophomore? Yes. And that would have been the year of 2014, correct? Yes. But before, before the summer of 2015, obviously. Yes. Did you go to uh, fraternity parties at places other than the CF House? Yes. Dealing with the CF House, when you went to those parties, uh, was it common for there to be alcohol being served there? Yes. At every party? Yes. When you would go to those parties, would there be anyone at the front door that would check IDs? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. No. Once you entered the house, would there typically be a bar set up? Or how would, how would alcohol be served? Let me just sort of ask you generally. Addison, have you heard? Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll excuse you to the jury for just a few moments while you're there. Don't discuss the case. And like you say, I just need to sit your form. Express your opinion about the issue in this trial during this time. Get your excuse. Yes, sir. Mr. Honor, the state would object as to relevancy. There is no evidence in the record, and to my knowledge, that will be in the record that there was any kind of fraternity party at the defendant's fraternity or any other. It, it seems transparent to me that the attempt is to sort of indict the whole college drinking scene, but I would contend that there's no relevance as to the facts of this case about what bar setups existed at parties that had, that weren't relevant to this case? Well, Your Honor, Chandler Kane is accused of murder. He's accused of doing this maliciously. And what we do have is a culture there. You've got somebody that's 18 years old, and they leave home, and they come to they come to UNC, and they go through fraternity rush, and the first thing they do is they're served alcohol at all these parties, and it's it's part of the culture there. It's part of the culture. Are we talking about mouse? Or are we talking about young kids after they left home that are sitting here and they're taught how to drink at all these things? I think it's I think it's absolutely relevant as to what's going on here. <coughs> I'm not going to sit here and talk. I'm not going to sit here and talk about getting into every party that was at the Sig F house. But is it relevant that they have parties there where IDs aren't checked? That they have parties at the bars where IDs aren't checked properly? And that's directly a piece of this case. Well, I can give you just a little bit of leeway, but we, we're, we're really close to going over the um, bar. And, and I, I don't think we have anything about fraternity rush here at all. Um, and I don't know that she knows about what occurs at fraternity rush. Okay. I doubt she went through that. I don't think she did, Your Honor. Um, but, but be careful. I mean, you know, I understand. You, know, you can ask her questions about you know, consumption. Um, but we need to move on too. Yeah, yeah. Right here. I, I'll finish right there and then move. Okay. Yeah. Witness with the Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Green, I believe I had asked you about being at the Sig F House and being at um, a rush event. 
Is that correct? Or was it a, a, regular, a regular party at the SIGF house? <clears throat> when you would go, nobody would check an ID at the door. Is, is that right? Yes. When you would go inside, would anybody check IDs to see if there are underage people drinking inside? No. Back to the bars, La Res, and he's not here. How often would you and your group of friends, if you could estimate, go there to La Res? We'll, we'll start with La Res, like on a, on a monthly or however you can do that. How often would y'all go there is my question. At least every weekend. At least every weekend. Staying, staying with La Res, was the practice, well, let me strike that, I apologize. Your fake ID, did it have your picture on it? Yes. Where did it say you lived? Um, if, if you remember. Chicago, I think. It was, it was a Chicago driver's license? Yes. You need to answer. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Sorry. So when you would, then on, on this night, July 18th, when you went to La Res, you showed a fake ID at the door. Right? Yes. There was a there was a, a, a bouncer, I guess you would call him or her, at the door that would check IDs, correct? Yes. And everybody in the group that you went with had a fake ID. Yes. Now once you went in and you went to the bar to purchase a drink, did anybody card you or ask for identification at the bar? I didn't purchase any drinks that night, but in the past, no, they would not recheck an ID. Thank you for distinguishing between that. That wasn't a good question at all. But on the other times that you guys would go there, the group would go there, that would be sort of the process. Once you, once you get in the door, you're fine because you're not going to get checked at any of the bars in there. Yes. How many bars inside La Res, La Residence are there? There's an... Out, there's an inside one and an outside one, but the outside one is not always open. Now, back and out of La Res, if he's not here, how often would your group go to he's not here? About the same. About at the least same. once a week. I mean, yeah, at least once a weekend. At least once a weekend. Was it a similar process or procedure there? Checked ID at the door, right? Yes. But once you got into he's not, nobody checked IDs once you got inside, right? Yes. How many bars are inside he's not here once you get in there? There's one upstairs that's always open, and there's a bar downstairs, but again, that's not always open. Focusing on this night. Focusing on this night, do you remember being in La Res? Yes. You didn't have any, you didn't order any alcohol in La Res, though? No. I believe you stated that you, um, was it there that you spent a lot of time in the bathroom? Or I, it I was at He's Not. That was at He's Not. Yes. <laughs> do you remember seeing Chandler at La Res? N no, but I know that we were all there together, but I don't think I was around him. Was it pretty crowded that night in there? I would say so. Do you think you talked to him or are you just not sure? I honestly don't know if I talked to him in person. Yes, ma'am, and that's fair enough. Yes, ma'am. At some point, you walked to he's not here, and I believe you said with two random girls you didn't know. Yes. And that's, you corrected me, thank you, that's when you went upstairs and you spent some time in the bathroom. Yes. In the bathroom. Yes. Was that because you were, you were really getting too intoxicated? I already was too intoxicated and I needed to chill. So I took water into the bathroom and I sat there for a while. Did you ever 
see Chandler there if he's not here? I said earlier, I feel like there's a vague memory of passing him by, but I never saw any, I wasn't there with anyone at that point. You have a vague memory of, of passing by him. I take it there was nothing about him while he was, he's not, while he was at he's not here then that really stood out. Is that fair? Yes. Now at some point you left he's not here. Did you leave there alone? Yes. Where did you go? I started to walk back to my apartment. At short breath? Yes. At this point, are you texting Chandler a lot about Case? Yes. Do you remember texting him? As you sit here now, do you remember texting him about Case? N not specifically, but I know I did it. I was. You started to walk to shortbread, but you you changed your mind or turned around and you walked in a different direction. Is that right? No. Well, at some point you ran into the two friends from Ashboro, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Were those two friends, were they by themselves? They, yeah, just with each other, yes. I think. This would have been after 2 a.m.? Yes. I had already, before I saw them, I had already gone back to my apartment and then left again. You went to your apartment. Did, did, you, did you go in your apartment? Just the lobby. Just the lobby area. Mm -hmm. What did you do when you got to the lobby area? I used the bathroom, and then I got a text message to meet up. From Case. Case Aldridge. Yes. Where did you go to meet up with Case? We met in between, like in the middle of where we live, and it was right around um, the church on Franklin Street, and we ran into his two friends then, lost. The church on Franklin Street, that, is that... Is that the church that's at the corner of Franklin? And then what's that cross street that turns into MLK? Um, Columbia, maybe? Columbia or Cameron? Columbia, Columbia is the one that turns into MLK. Is that right? I think so. It, but it's that big church on the corner. Yes, at the big intersection that goes into MLK. All right. So if here's the big church, you've got Franklin Street here, correct? Yes. The bars are on this side of the street. At least he's not on this side of the street. Is that right? Yes. Okay. The church is on the corner. If I'm looking at the front of the church and there's Franklin Street to my right, to the left of the church is the Beta House. Yes. Is that correct? That's the exactly. Beta, the Beta yes, Turner that's House. exactly where we met. In between Beta and the church. In between, you and Case met in between Beta and Church. And that is where we saw his two friends lost. So that's where we stopped to talk to them, to help them. Was Case with them? No. You and Case met up first there, and then they came walking, correct? Yes. And they simply said they were looking for Chandler? Yes. Was there a long, long conversation about that? Um, we talked about how they had his phone and they couldn't find him. And we had a conversation about like where they were location wise and like direct, trying to give them directions. I offered to get them an Uber to send them to where they were going and they didn't want to take one. And then they said they left. That was the end of it. I wouldn't say it was very long. But those two guys had Chambers phone. I think so. They didn't seem upset or anything. 
they were just looking for chance. Yes. Ms. Green, thank you. No further questions. Red Rack. Ms. Green, earlier Mr. Smith asked you about an immunity agreement. I'm going to ask you a little bit about that. Um, the best you can remember in terms of people from my office, who did you speak with? The first, um, the first time I was given the immunity agreement, I was with ALE officers and my lawyer. And then um, I don't think I met with anyone after that until the deposition around April with all of the lawyers. And then recently I've spoken with the investigative DA, I think is who it was, and you. If I said the name Rob Barron, would that? Yes. Okay. So to your recollection in terms of people with the state, you remember an ALE agent, Rob Barron with our office and me? Yes. Okay. Did any of those three people ever um, suggest to you what you should say? No. Did any of them ever um, ask or suggest that you lie or exaggerate or embellish your testimony? No, they just asked me to tell the truth. Okay. Did I ever ask you to lie, exaggerate, or embellish your testimony? No. Okay. If I had asked you to lie, would you do it? No. If I said, if you don't say this thing, then you're going to get charged with a crime, would you do it? I'm under oath. I don't think I could. Thank you. Um, To your knowledge, did um, Mr. Kenya smoke marijuana on July 18th? On July 18th, to your knowledge, did he smoke marijuana that day? Earlier that day, yes. Okay. Um, and you said around this time you all were, you described best friends. Very close friends, yes. Okay. Um, do you have personal knowledge about the regularity with, mis with which Mr. Kane? may I be heard, Your Honor? Uh, do you have personal knowledge as to the regularity with which Mr. Kenya smoked marijuana? Oh, maybe she doesn't want to answer. Okay. Do I answer? Yes, ma'am. Oh, um, I would say so. Okay. Um, how regularly did Chandler Kenya smoke marijuana in the weeks and months leading up to July 18th of last year? Um, I would say it happened often. Okay. Do you remember um, providing a statement to ALE in which you said that, to your knowledge, he smoked marijuana every day? In the very recent weeks before that, I would say that's true. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Green, um, I want to hear your objection. I was going to follow up with a couple of questions based on this question. Okay. And then I can be heard if that's okay with the court. That's fine. Go on. Thank you, sir. Mr. Neiman asked if you had personal knowledge about if Chandler had smoked on July the 18th. You didn't see him smoke on July the 18th, did you? No, I've never seen him smoke personally. Never seen it. No. Thank you. No further questions. May I follow up? Yes. 
Did he ever tell you if he smoked marijuana? He did. So when you say this personal knowledge, is it based upon the admissions that he made to you about his use of marijuana? Yes. Okay. Happy heard, John? Yes. I guess there are two different, two different issues here or times around you, Your Honor. One is would be this day, but I'm not sure, but I understand that, but I don't understand how regularly he smoked <laughs> marijuana is relevant to this case. It, you can't use, he can't use that to be able to show a pattern of smoking marijuana. I don't, I don't understand how that's relevant. It's, it's, uh, it's unfairly prejudicial to the defendant, Your Honor. The state's theory, is, it, the state's theory here is impairment based on alcohol. That's what the charges are based on. That's what all the officers, troopers, rather, opinions are based on. And I understand that we have a blood test that's going to show the presence of marijuana. I get that. And I understand how this day, at least this evening, rather, could be relevant. But I don't understand how, and I, and I strongly object to any kind of pattern that's being established on regular marijuana smoking. Your Honor, I would um, ask the court to overrule the objection uh, primarily on the grounds that when the, the defense elected to specifically ask the question about the defendant's character as to peacefulness and kindness, they elicited affirmatively positive character evidence on behalf of the defendant and have opened the door to character evidence generally as to the defendant. Smoking of, marijuana, smoking of marijuana is an illicit act. It's illegal. And so therefore, I have another basis. I hope the court's satisfied on that basis alone. They have opened the door to character evidence by specifically with leading questions of this witness asked character questions. I could just step back a, a one step. You said earlier that you would describe the defendant as being a best friend of yours in the period of time sh leading up to July 18th of last year, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, were you aware of um, how regularly the defendant smoked marijuana? Yes. How would you describe his marijuana use in the weeks and months leading up to July 19th, 2015? I'd say it was very often. Okay. Um, do you recall uh, at a previous statement you gave describing his marijuana use as every day? Yes. Okay. Do you um, differ with that characterization now or is that fair? It's fair. Okay. Um, how do you know? I've never personally seen him do it, but I, I was told by him. Okay. Um, you um, interacted with several different people on the night of July 18th going into the 19th other than the defendant, correct? Yes. Okay. One of those people was Case? Yes. Did Case drive anywhere that night? Not that I know of. Okay. Did you drive anywhere that night? No. Um, to your knowledge, did the two friends from Ashboro drive anywhere that night? I'm not sure. Okay. And I'll um, ask the question this way. Of the myriad college-age students or people that you interacted with that night, are you aware of anyone else that drove a car that night? No. Okay. 
um, you said that you offered to, I guess call isn't the right word, um, summon, Uber. order an Uber through the uh, smartphone app for the, for the friends from Ashboro. Yes. Why did you do that? So they could make it where they were ever they were trying to get to safely. They were also offered, Case also offered for them to sleep on the couch inside of the fraternity house, but they did not take the offer, as okay. far as I know. No further questions on redirect? Sir, with, with the No. Thank you. Thank you. No, Your Honor. Uh, any objection to her being released from Wichita? Yes. Uh, at this time, I, I do object. I'm not saying she can't well, she leave the courtroom, but I mean, yes. standing. Mm -hmm. Right. Can you explain that? Brother the evidence, side. Yes, the state will call Alex Pugh. Sir, please state your name for the record. Alex Pugh. Could you spell it? A-L-E-X-P-U-G-H. And um, tell us about yourself. What, where do you live? What do you do? So I live in Ashboro, North Carolina um, at school at UNCW. Uh, right now I'm doing the Disney College program. And, yeah. Okay. Um, what's the Disney College program? Oh, it's just an internship that you can do through your school and go work for Disney for a semester or so. Okay. Did you come up here from Florida for purposes of your testimony today? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, when and where, best of your recollection, did you first meet the defendant? First met Chandler, it's probably freshman year of high school. I knew of him before then, but that's when I really got to know him. Okay. Are you all the same year? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, you all both attend Ashboro High School? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and um, how would you describe your relationship with the defendant? I was really close with him, one of my best buddies. Um, our personality just clicked and just got along. Okay. So at what point would you say he went from being somebody you knew of to becoming your friend? Ooh, right, right off the bat, yeah. So since freshman year of high school? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and then during high school, you all were pretty much together regularly because you were in the same high school? Yes, sir. Okay. And then did um, your regularity of your friendship change when you went to college? Uh, we just didn't see each other as much, but. Yeah. I'm not asking, um, you know, did you stop being friends, but I mean, once you went to different colleges, did you see him a little less than you did back from when you were in high school? Oh, yes, sir. Um, but did you stay in touch and do things with him pretty regularly? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I'm going 
to um, direct your attention to July 17th of 2015. That would be a Friday. Do you remember what you were doing generally on that day? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, what were you doing? So at first I was at Holden Beach with my buddy Denton Ritchie and then uh, had plans for Chandler and Josh to come visit me in Wilmington. Uh, we're going to go see a concert, and they came down and stay with me. Was that Mattis Yahoo? Yes, sir. Mattis Yahoo. Spell Mattis Yahoo. Mattis Yahoo. M-A-T-I-S-Y-A-H-U. What kind of music is that? It's like reggae, hip-hop. Okay. Yeah. Um, and was this something that you all, through phone, text, otherwise, kind of got together and planned for a little while that you were going to do this concert together? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so you were already down in the Wilmington area, correct? Yes, sir. And then did at some point the defendant and Josh come to join you? Yes, sir. And your relationship with Josh Hall, would you describe that as similar to the one you have with the defendant? Yeah, we're friends. Uh, not as close, but yeah, still friends. Okay. Friends with him in high school and then he went to a different college, same kind of thing? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so on Friday, when, best you can recall, did they join you in Wilmington? It was afternoonish, so maybe like five or the evening, I should say. Okay. If I can remember correctly, that's closest. Um, and so, what happened when they got there? So, got there and um, hung out in my apartment for a little bit, and just kind of getting ready to go to the concert. What does getting ready to go to the concert mean? Um, we smoked marijuana. Okay. Before going to the concert. Um, do you um, recall if it was who supplied the marijuana? It was Chandler. Okay. Um, and that was at your apartment in Wilmington? Yes, sir. Okay. And um, did you leave from your apartment at some point? Did we leave? Right. Yeah, yeah, we left, yeah, and went to the concert. Yes, sir. Best you can recall about what time did you go to the concert? Maybe an hour before, 30 minutes before. Um, I think the concert was at 8. Okay. Yeah. How did you get there? We drove. Who drove? Chandler did. Okay. Um... Did you, um, once you got to the concert venue, did you go straight in or did you uh, hang out outside first? From what I remember, we just went straight in. Okay. Did you plan to do something called tailgating the concert before you went in? It might have been the plan, but I don't remember doing that now. Permission to approach the witness? Page 674 and 675, what's previously been authenticated as State's Exhibit 1. Um, 
I'm not gonna ask you if you recognize it, but can you just generally describe what this is I'm showing you? Without saying any of the words that are on it, but can you tell what I'm, sh the piece of paper I'm showing to you? recognize it you're asking or right yeah now I do yeah. okay and without revealing the specific content of it what would you describe this as being I guess it was plans but I don't remember right. um, doing that w um, would this um, would you have any would you deny that this appears to be a text interaction between you and the defendant a few days prior to the concert on the 17th. Oh, no, the text. Okay. Yes, sir. And looking over the content of the text, do you have any reason to doubt or deny that the texts that you're sending and receiving are between you and the defendant? Yes, sir. You or would agree that they are? They're texts between us, yes. Okay. Um, Your Honor, this time I would seek to enter into evidence marked as State's Exhibit 1A, an excerpt from the previously authenticated State's Exhibit 1. Um, I'm going to ask you to read what is written on this paper, obviously not the things that are marked out. Start with reading the timestamp on the first text and then the ensuing messages, who they're from and who they're for. Okay. So you said read the date and time? Um, I think for clarity, if you read the time from the first text, and then after that, unless there, you would say there's a substantial amount of time lag just to give the time when the conversation started, after that, just read the actual texts as they come. And read me like message from so-and-so? Yes, please. Okay. So July 15th, 2015, two o'clock, uh, 140537 message from Josh Hall it says there is a $5 charge at the door if you're under 21 so and 1406 message to Alex Pugh there's an extra $5 charge fuck that um, uh, 1406 22 message to Alex Pugh is your fake your face and uh, 206, message from Josh Hall. Yeah, IKR, yup, and my actual name. Uh, 207, message to Alex Pugh. Yeah, you'll probably be straight. And 207, uh, message to Alex Pugh. I'll probably use mine of you do. Uh, 207 again, message to Alex Pugh. Fuck that charge. And then 211, message from Josh. I need that $5 for more shenanigans, so totally going to use mine. And 211, message to Alex Pugh. Yeah, man. And then 211 again, message to Alex Pugh. I mean, we should get there early and tailgate the concert, if yeah. And then uh, 12, uh, two, 212, message to Alex Pugh. AKA, we listen to music and drink a shot ton, LOL. And then uh, 212, message to Alex Pugh, and smoke too. And then 212, message to Alex Pugh, smiley face. And 213, message from Josh Hall, righteous plan there, Chan. Um, and then going over to the next page, is there more? At 221, message to Alex Pugh. Thanks, I'm gonna, I'm kinda stoned in class and I was like getting pumped. Okay. Um, 
Thank you. Um, understanding that you probably don't remember exactly a text interaction you had from a year and change ago. Um, based upon what recollection you do have, do you have any doubt that that is a true and accurate representation of a text interaction you had between yourself, Josh Hall, and the defendant on July 15th? You're asking if, if this is like the actual text? Like, yes. Okay. Do you have any reason to doubt that that's accurate? No. Okay. And um, you were involved in the conversation, so you may be in a better position to provide context. The messages that say, that lead in with message to Alex Pugh, did you understand to be those as messages coming from the defendant? Yes, because unless it was like a group message, that's the only way I could think, but yes. And, and, and that's why, and that's fair. In terms of context, when me, at one point there's a message captioned as message to Alex Pugh, and then either you or Josh respond back with righteous plan Chan. Is that right? It says message from Josh Hall, righteous plan there, Chan. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that would have been July 15th, two days before the concert. And part of the reason I bring that up is that appeared to be the plan. Did you all do that? Just the smoking part before the concert. You did not drink before the concert? I don't know, no, sir. I don't remember. Okay. Now, um, to clarify, at this point, you were of legal age to drink, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, to your knowledge, were the defendant and Josh, were they old enough to drink at that time? No, sir. Okay. Um, in fact, Part of the interaction there is talking about whether or not their fake IDs would work at this place, right? Yes, sir. To avoid that $5 charge. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and and you, you indicated that you thought that it would based upon it being his name on the ID or, or to at least one of them, right? <coughs> I'll rephrase the question. Did you offer an opinion about whether or not their IDs would fly? I may have. Okay. But um, I don't recall. Okay. So plans aside, you didn't do quite what you planned to do. You went to the concert. Okay. Um, oh, yes, sir. Okay. While at the concert, did you consume any alcoholic beverages? At the concert? Yes. Not that I remember, no. <coughs> um, do you remember if the defendant or Josh did? I don't believe they did, no. Okay. Um, and so about how long were you at the concert? Maybe two hours. Okay. Could have been longer, not exact, I don't remember exactly. Um, did you um, consume any marijuana when you were at the concert? Not at the concert, no. Did you consume marijuana at the <coughs> venue outside the concert? No, sir. Okay. Just before we left okay. to go to the concert. Um, do you know if the defendant did? I'm not sure. I don't believe so. So you were at the concert for about two hours and then you left? Yes, sir. Um, where did you go next? If I remember correctly, we just went back to our apartment, to my apartment, excuse me. Okay. How did you get there? Drove. Who drove? Chandler. Okay. Um, what did you do once you got back to the apartment? I don't remember anything specific. Uh, um, just hung out. Is it, is it possible that you all drank some drinks and played some cards? Not that I remember. Okay. Okay. 
Um, so what do you remember about what, if anything, you did the rest of that night on the 17th? Just the concert, pretty much. That's And then go, going back to the apartment. Okay. That's all. All right. Um, then you went to sleep? Yes, sir. Do you remember when you got up the next day? Not an exact time, but generally. Um, <coughs> maybe 9 or 10. Okay. Um, what did you do when you got up? We decided to go to the beach and uh, okay. sm smoke before we went to the beach. Okay. Is your house on the beach? Apartment? No, sir. It was mm, it's about a five-minute drive. Okay. Um, did uh, the defendant smoke any marijuana at the house before you went to the beach? Yes, sir. Okay. And how did you get to the beach? I drove. You drove? Yes, sir. All right. Um, how long were you at the beach? A few hours. Okay. Um, then when you were done at the beach, what did you do next? We um, went back to my apartment and then just planned out um, plans to go to Chapel Hill and slowly packing up. Okay. Um, did you smoke any more marijuana during that time? Yes, sir. Okay. Did the defendant smoke any more marijuana during that time? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, to the best of your recollection, um, when did you leave Wilmington? Left Wilmington, I think it was around 5, 5.30 maybe. Okay. Somewhere around then. All right. Um, and what was the plan for how the three, and was the plan for all three of you to go to Chapel Hill together? Yes, sir. Okay. What was the plan for how you were going to do that? I was just going to fall behind Chandler and okay. Josh. So was the defendant driving his Jeep? Yes, sir. And Josh was his passenger? Yes, sir. Okay. And um, you were going to follow in a different car behind him? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and did anything happen along the way that mucked up that plan? Yeah, my car broke down. Okay. Roughly speaking, do you remember about where that happened? <coughs> I think it was either just outside or inside of Durham. I don't remember pushing it to Waffle House. Okay. So, so the caravan made it almost all, the whole way before your car broke down? Yes, sir. And then at that point, did um, you sort of ditch your car somewhere, for lack of a better term, and get in the car with them? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, did you interact with um, the defendant and Josh over via phone during the time you all were driving as a caravan? Yes, sir. I believe so, yeah. In the form of text messages? Yes, sir. Would it be fair to say that you all texted back and forth a, a pretty good amount, more than once or twice? Yeah, I think it was more than once or twice, yeah. Um, and um, then uh, do you remember once you all were all together in the car together. Do you remember the defendant shooting a video of the three of you all singing along to a song? No, sir, I don't remember. Okay. If I said it was the song What I Got by Sublime, do you remember there being a point when y'all were singing along to that song and Chandler might have been holding his phone up videoing you all? We, we could have. Okay. Uh, so, anything unusual happen in the trip to get from um, to get from um, Durham to Chapel Hill? Did that basically go 
along normally? Yeah, nothing. Or car breakdowns? No, anything? no, sir, no. Okay. Um, and then, so when you got to Chapel Hill, where did you go? We went to Harris Teeter in Carborough. Okay. And what did you do there? There, I purchased alcohol. Okay. Um, did you purchase al alcohol just for yourself? No, sir. Who else did you get, get alcohol for? Um, it was just Josh and Chandler. Okay. Did the defendant ask you to buy him some alcohol? Yes, sir. Did he give you money to do it? Yes, sir. <coughs> do you remember what you got? 18 pack of pours and then 24 case of Budweiser. Was the Coors for the defendant? I believe so, yes. Was the Budweiser for the defendant? No. Um, one was from Josh and one was from Chandler. Okay. Um, in fact, would it be fair to say that, and we'll come back, but that over the course of the rest of the night, was Chandler, the defendant, carrying around that Coors 18 pack during the early part of the evening? Yes, sir. Drinking from it regularly? Uh, I don't know about regularly, but I mean, it was on them. So we were going around. Did you, on more than one occasion, view the defendant carrying the 18 pack in one hand and an open can of cores in the other? I don't know about open can in the other hand, but I mean, it was around the night. Okay. All right, so you went to Harris Teeter, got some beer. Where'd you go next? Then we went to Chandler's apartment to drop off our stuff, like our clothes, luggage, all that stuff. Okay. Um, what did you do while you were there? I think just dropped off luggage from what I remember, and then, yeah. Do you remember if you smoked any more marijuana there? No, sir. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, um, how long were you at the defendant's apartment? Maybe 10 minutes or so. It wasn't too long. Okay. About what time of day or night were we at, were we at, at this point? Maybe 8 o'clock. Okay. Yeah, something like that. And so after you spent about 10 minutes at the defendant's apartment, where'd you go next? We went to, I think the name was Short Bread Loft apartment to drop off one of the cases of beer. Okay. W uh, why were you doing that? I heard that there was going to be a little get together there later on that night. Okay. And so you wanted to go ahead and drop off something at that place instead of having to lug it around in between then? Fair to say? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so then after you dropped off the beer at Shortbread, what'd you do next? Then we went back to Chandler's apartment to get ready to shower up and stuff. Um, and uh, who was driving when you went when you went to and from Shortbread? Who was driving? Chandler. Okay. Um, <coughs> when you went back to the apartment, did you all break open the cores? Yes, sir. Did you have some? Yes, sir. Did the defendant have some? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and how long would you say you were back at the apartment for the shower up and get ready time? 30, 40 minutes. Okay. After you were there, did you go somewhere else? Yeah, then we headed to Chandler's fraternity house. Okay. Um, how did you go from Mill Creek Apartments? Is that right, as far as you know, Mill Creek Apartments where 
oh, Bennett Lou? Yes, sir. Um, how did you get from Mill Creek to the fraternity house? Did y'all walk then? We drove. Who drove? Chandler. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so then you went to the fraternity house. What happened then? Then we went inside, uh, uh, spoke to some of the fraternity guys, hung out a little bit. Um, Did you meet some new friends that night? New people that night? Yeah, there's new people being met. Yeah, yes, sir. Um, your your determination, whether you call them friends, but you basically, fair to say, you had come there as Chandler's friend from home and were meeting some of his college friends. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, do you remember who you met when you got to the fraternity house? Any of them? Mm. I remember Case, um, other names, I'm not sure, no. There was others met, though, but. Um, is, is Case maybe more memorable to you than most of the rest? Just a little bit. Okay, I mean, he's the one whose name you remembered. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so when you got to the fraternity house, what did you all do then? We drank the cores a little bit and, and uh, smoked again. Okay. Did the defendant drink cores there? I don't remember like t totally seeing him drink, but it was around. Okay. Did he smoke marijuana there? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take our lunch and recess at this point. During our lunch and recess period, it is your duty not to talk among yourselves about this case. Did you not to talk to the parties, the witnesses, the lawyers about anything at all? It's further duty not to talk to anyone else, to allow anyone else to talk with you to say anything in your presence about this case. If you see here, over here, uh, anything at all about this case, you need to let the sheriff know about it when you come in. Don't do any individual research or investigation on your own. If touch on this trial, stay away from your smartphone. Um, have no contact with anyone participating in this trial and do not form or express an opinion about this case during this time. <coughs> that while everyone else still remains seated, I'm going to excuse the 14 of you and ask that you return and assemble in the jury room at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Again, we go by that clock. That's your excuse. Leave your um, notes in your seat. Yes, ma'am, if you need something from the room, that's fine. Uh, 